Hello, my name is Matt Denton, this is Mantis Hacks, and in this video I'm going to be going back to one of my 3D printed giant Lego projects. But this time, it's going to be even bigger. You may already be familiar with my giant Lego 3D printed go-kart. I basically took this Lego Technic kit from uh, 1980 something and I scaled it up by a factor of five using my 3D printers. The idea was that my nephew Ruben was gonna sit on this giant Lego go-kart, but even at a scale factor of five times larger, it still wasn't big enough for him and he was six or seven at the time, and it certainly wasn't big enough for me. So this project is basically trying to get the go-kart big enough so at least Ruben can sit on it, but ideally so that I could sit on it too, and then also make it electric and fast, and maybe add some brakes. I can't really fit anyone on this cart with the seat in that position or any of this on the back, so all that's gonna come off and then the seat's gonna come out just to make printing easier, so that'll probably go uh, something like that. I'm not really sure what to do with the seat yet. Anyway, let's take a look at the CAD first and I'll show you what I've got so far. I decided to go away from blue because I knew I wasn't gonna to stick to the original design of the go-kart and this scale is 8.34 times larger. The 8.34 times this axle here becomes a 40 millimeter axle and it's very easy to get 40 millimeter bearings for things like the wheels. And also it should be just big enough for me to sit on. I can't really print axles longer than 3.75 long. I'm gonna put a hollow aluminum square tube through to join multiple axles together. So the accelerator on one side and the brake on the other. And I've left these holes in the sides of these modified hinges so the brake cable will attach between here and here. I've left lots of holes in the parts to bolt um, through to the chassis like all of this could be bolted together. I'm not relying just on the Lego um, attachment or glue. I've added pins to the bushings at the back here, so that'll lock it to the axle and stop that axle from sliding out. There's a bearing in each part, so that'll rotate nicely in there. I should probably have some kind of thrust bearing up here, but uh, I'm gonna try it without to start with. Bearings in the uh, steering block assembly there. I mean, it's obviously gonna have horrible parallel steering. It is what it is. It's a Lego go-kart special Lego block which is going to hold the disc brake assembly which will be bolted through to the block and then the block will probably be bolted to, to the uh, main frame here. So it's a proper 30 millimeter keyway to go-kart axle. My disc brake is uh, going to be locked onto that axle. Uh, go-kart uh, hubs which I found online again made for a 30 mil keyway axle. So it looks like a Lego wheel from the outside but it actually goes through a piece and picks up into this uh, uh, aluminium hub here and on the other side of the axle pulley system uh, with the motor here somewhere uh, now that motor doesn't look anywhere near big enough but that's actually uh, got a maximum power of about 2.2 kilowatts it doesn't look large enough to me but uh, we'll have to wait and see i think i might end up having to try and uh, attach a proper um, go-kart bucket seat so i think it would be quite good fun to try and make a proper lego seat but maybe with some soft studs Otherwise it's gonna be quite painful. Well, I've printed most of the parts because I actually started this project last year. Uh, here's one of them. This is uh, the eight-way uh, Lego Technic beam. It's printed in two parts um, because it won't fit on my bed. I've got a TAS6 printer and I used a Morstruder with this part and this is printed in uh, Polymaker's PLA Plus material. So it's like a stronger version of PLA, nice and easy to print and joined together with a bolted section and then there's wedges inside of here and also glued. I'm just going to lay all the parts out so I can see what I've got and what I'm missing and most importantly whether I'm going to have room to sit on this car. I 
a significant pile of 3D printed parts. Let's just take a quick look at some of these parts in closer detail. Here's the uh, steering arm. You can see the uh, bearing inside of either side there. And then the axle that goes through it. And this is Polymaker's PC Max material. It was so tough that I'm actually going to leave it as a standard Lego axle and not use any metal parts in this. I've pinned that uh, uh, bushing on the end there. Uh, obviously it needs a shorter bolt through there. And that spins nice and freely. This PC Max material, it takes a tap very well. A large washer on the bolt, like that, which is just going to hold the wheel in place, stop it from sliding off the end of the axle. This is printed in uh, two pieces, so it's printed from here up. The top pin is actually held in place with a bolt. The hinge that uh, I've made before, but this is slightly different in that I've just put a hole all the way through it, so it'll take an M8 bolt, so it's going to make that uh, joint nice and strong. Holes on the side there, so that when the two parts are together, you'll be able to put like a brake cable across the two uh, sides there, so it'll work as a brake pedal. So the Technic pins are printed in two halves, and there is a uh, M8 bolt and a nut down the middle here. These half bushings came out really nice and go together beautifully. These are fairly self-explanatory. I have done a version which takes uh, a bearing here, and that's just for the steering uh, arm column. They come out really nice, these parts, always one of my favourites. So the rear wheel, which uh, comprises of two Lego wheels put together, on the insides of them, they don't look anything like Lego. The outside looks kind of like Lego. And then the inside of this one, which joins to the hub, again, is totally uh, custom. And they go on to one of these go-kart hubs. As I CAD this part up and then did the inverse of it inside of this part here, and they should go together like that. And then the outside part, gets bolted through with some extra long bolts pass all the way through and then bolt into that uh, rear hub there this is printed in uh, polymakers uh, polyflex material uh, as these were going to get pretty hard hardware in use i thought i'd do a double perimeter so they are pretty tough and there is a certain technique to getting these on the rims because it is uh, it's not an easy process it just takes a bit of uh, brute force and uh, determination the rack and pinion part and the uh, steering beam printed in two parts because I can't only fit this much on the bed. And of course I'll probably glue this as one section as well just to help with the strength. Finally here's that uh, Lego hinge for the front of the steering mechanism printed in multiple parts. Bolted the hinges on the ends for strength so there's lots of shear force down through here. Bolted those uh, caps on the end there on the top. Well, that's enough of that. Let's just start putting something together and see if any of it's going to fit. Now, right now we're all in lockdown. Ideally, I'd want to get a big piece of eight, eight by four sheet and put it down and assemble on that. But uh, I can't get out and get anything. So I'm going to have to think of something because this table doesn't seem like it's going to be secure enough. And um, I don't really want to assemble it on the carpet. I need a bigger bench. I decided to move to my shed where I've got access to fine adjustment tools. So let's crack on. These pins are going to be joined together with this M10 bolt, a nut recess. So that should take an M10 nut inside of it and then wind the bolt in from the other side and pick up that nut. And I'm also going to use some of this uh, PLA gloop to also glue them together. The nut now is uh, captive inside of that recess. I just need to clean up that uh, lip around there. Put the bearings into place in the bottom of these uh, steering arms here. And then they're hidden by one of those little uh, rings that goes over the top. I already have the steering mechanism assembled. I do need to put a shorter M6 bolt through there if I've got something. I've actually got a nut inside there so that when the uh, top gets put in place it's actually going into a proper threaded nut. I'm going to glue it as well just to be sure.
this has gone together quite nicely. Um, what I am going to do is just take these two beams apart again. I'm going to glue um, this to these two parts and then these two parts to this front section. But then I'm not going to glue them to the chassis. I'm going to bolt them through the chassis here and here so that I can get this apart if I need to get bearings out or something like that. Now I'm just going to open up the holes in here ready to take that M8 bolt that's going to go all the way through this piece. I'm going to run this bolt through and tie this all together because I was just looking at how much flex there is in this part once that wheel is on and loading this up and I'm wondering whether I'm going to need to reprint these two top ones uh, much stronger. These are only two perimeters at the moment. They're on uh, they're printed on a Morstruder but I could print a three perimeter or even a four perimeter version to make that top part much stronger. Adding those uh, bolts through there has tightened everything up through here and this is not flexing so much now but I still want to load it up and uh, give it a proper test so I'm going to put the wheels on so I can now maybe see how much flex this is going to have. That's a fair bit actually. I mean it feels like it'll be strong enough because most of the weight is going to be at the back where I'm sat and, and that will be supported by the big axle, the steel axle I've got at the back. So there shouldn't be too much of the load at the front. I'm very pleased with how this has gone together, but it's going to be even better when I get that steering column in place. So I'm going to put that assembly together next. One of the engineering challenges I faced um, making this car this big was actually getting this Lego Technic beam long enough. I've made longer Technic axles like this before, but I usually put a piece of uh, threaded studding down the middle, but you can't really transfer torque very well through that. So what I've done with this version is I've actually put a square hole down the middle, some half inch aluminium square box section. I've not actually tried this yet. All I've done is I've cut this to length and then I've just taken a file and taken the edges off there, just taken the burr off the edges um, to see how well they'll fit in here. And the idea is that I'll put them together and then glue them. Oh, like a glove and that is perfect there's no play in it but it just goes in beautifully oh nice now the other advantage of this method is that i might actually want to make this longer and what i can do is just print a set a center section and extend this out and of course with that square shaft in the middle it transfers torque really nicely feels pretty good. feels really good actually. I'm quite excited about this now. It does feel like that's going to want to be longer so the steering wheel comes out a bit but I'm not going to make that adjustment until I've um, sat in place and figured that out for sure. Maybe I'll glue those two together, stop that from moving around so much and uh, this all needs pinning but otherwise uh, yeah pretty exciting. A lot of the play in this column here is actually caused by the axle I'm using at the moment. I actually printed these holes slightly too big, so the axles are very sloppy in here, as I've printed a new type of axle just for this one here, which is a tighter fit. It's got rid of a lot of the play in that steering column. Very nice. The next step to do is to get this chassis in place so that I can work out how long I want to make it. So I could fit it in its original position, which is there, or I could shift it back and leave it in that position, then I'll get an extra bit of length for the seat. I can't really decide, but I feel like I'm gonna have to fit something and then try it out, maybe sit down on the floor and see whereabouts my seating position is. These pins are really tight. Uh, to get them in, 
you literally have to hammer them into place. Although, I do have a fine adjustment tool. Now, if Chuck Norris was in the drill business, that's the kind of drill Chuck would make. One inch and five eighth drill bit, which measures up at 41.3 millimeters. So dead handy for clearing out these for my tight fit pins. Ah. And now I'm gonna put these rear rails in place and uh, should be able to see if there's room for me to sit. Just finished printing my last of the uh, large Technic beams and this goes across the back here. So this is the original length of the car and this is going to extend it by one leg a unit but also give a bit of support across the back where the seat goes. The axle is going to run through here and they're going to support the axle with a bearing so then I'm going to get all of that strength from the axle in the seat area as well. Now I just need to get this down on the floor so I can see if there's enough room for me to sit on it. Aside from the fact that it's really uncomfortable to sit on, it feels like it's going to be big enough. I don't feel too cramped. Obviously I've got no seat back at the moment. The steering wheel could come a bit closer to me, so I'm going to extend that steering axle a bit, but um, other than that, it feels pretty good. Now that I'm happy with the length of the cart, I'm going to fit these tight pins in place. And of course, if I do decide I want it slightly longer, I can always try and take it apart again and move this whole axle back by one uh, Lego unit. I think that's a one-way trip. Yeah, there's no way these are coming out, not without a crowbar. I'm going to put my 30 mil axle bearings in place so that maybe I can slip the axle in and see if that all lines up. This is my 30 millimeter Keyway go-kart axle and it's going to need cutting down. I'm not quite sure how I'm going to do that. I'm just going to see if this will go through, whether all these bearings are lined up or not. I could really do with my other mallet, which is a, a nylon and aluminium faced mallet, but this is the only one I've got. And the actual's turning nice and freely. I've just uh, put two more tires on these two rear rims here, ready to put them onto the hub. Getting these tires on is really hard work. I greased them, I was jumping up and down on them, I was using levers. Anyway, I've got here eventually. It's great, I've just got it on and it's back to front. <laughs> They're looking pretty good and they run nice and smoothly. Let's get those front wheels in place. It's starting to look like a go-kart. Yeah. <laughs> it's not the lightest thing in the world, but it ain't that heavy either. And it feels strong, and it feels like I'm sat on a giant Lego go-kart. The steering's still nice and light, which is good. It doesn't feel like it's gonna fall apart, which is really good. And I'm really loving the orange and gray now. I'm really glad I went with that. Um, I wasn't sure about it, but actually, I think it was a great choice. There's heaps of strength in that, and even stood in the middle here. There's a bit of flex, but it feels pretty good. More than impressed with that. 
that's a giant Lego go-kart and I can't wait to ride it. But for now, this is as far as I can go. In the next video, maybe I'll get motors and brakes and maybe even a seat fitted. But until then, uh, please subscribe, please share, and I'll leave information in the description section below. Stay safe. Bye.